arms this whole time we've gone through four circuits so you know today is going to be arms triceps and biceps all right so all right. our first exercise our first exercise is going to be very simple uh but we're going to add a little uh, nuance to it um so it's going to be a, a basic chin up but on the eccentric right we're going to go slow right so that's going to promote growth that's going to promote strength all right so today pe stands for prolonged eccentric right i'll show you the exercise right, right now all right, so I'm up here, and I'm doing a chin-up, and then I'm coming to right about here. And you saw how yep. slow that was? Yeah. Come up fast. Long eccentric. There we go. Boom. Nice. nice. Simple as that. Simple as that. I mean, uh, Simple as that. You know, All right. And okay, you know, well, okay, so the next exercise we're going to do, right we're just going to do... Yeah, we're going to do it in a circuit, and as simple as, uh, you know, dips. Now, you could do a weighted variant. You could also do a weighted variant on the pull-ups, but, right, you know, right now, since we're, you know, doing this for the people, uh, I said we stick to the normal body weight. All right. All right. So, yeah, man. So Are you ready? How many dips? How many dips are we going to do? So, we're going to do max rep. We're going to do max rep. We're going to do till exhaustion. All right. And so, you know, we're not going to put a number in there. We're just going to we'll see how many we can bang out. Um to muscle failure, all right? And we're doing we're gonna two do reps. it twice. Two we're gonna reps. do it twice. So we're gonna all alternate, right, of course. Chin ups, dips, chin up, dips, right? All right, so easy as that. All right. Yep. Yes, yes, Y'all ready? Dave, yes, sir. Oh, you're gonna watch me. All right, all right. I'm gonna watch you. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. Yo, you so see that hang uh, time? today, man, the hang time. Yo, so yeah. today, man, um, let's talk about friends, man. Let's talk about friends. Oh. Oh, let's have them. Right, yo, so um, yo, Dave, man, we've been friends for like, um, damn, man, but almost our whole lives, like, yeah, like, uh, like six, seven, I was like in the sixth grade, you're like in seventh grade, some shit like that, right? It's uh -huh. been a long time, man, long time, been a long damn, time. damn. Been a long I mean, time. like 30, 30 years, yeah. yo, like 30 over, 30. over 30, over 30, bro. Well, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Right, right, like over yeah. 30 years. That's crazy. I'm like, yeah, that's, not, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that's crazy. crazy, right? So I think, um, you know, the, you know, long story short, just to give a little context, um, you know, Dave is in, he's, he's, he's in the military, um, oh. and and we don't really get a chance to see each other, you know. So we do these, you know, we started doing these uh, these phone calls in the morning because we're both into fitness. And we, what we found was that it really, we were really looking forward to the conversation, um, you know, because it felt like we had somebody in the gym with us. And it's just right. good to connect with your mans, you know what I mean? Right, um, right. And in those oh. conversations, in those conversations, we started, you know, realizing that our mental health and our, our well-being, it just started to boost and increase. Um, because it's like, kind of like a sword sharpening a sword, still sharpening still, right? So it got it got me thinking about friendships and how few authentic friendships I really have in my older age, you know. Mm. And you you said the mm. same thing that you know the old, it seems like the older you get, the less friendships you have, or the harder it yeah. is to make friends. I'm gonna go ahead and get a set because I'm sitting idle. What do you think about that? Would you agree? I, you, you no, know, I mean big time. And I like how you you know I like man you get nice with this man because I like how you added the fact that I was in the military because I'm gonna tell you. Uh, the military atmosphere is kind of like, you know, add friends and stir, right, type deal. Uh, they kind of want you to, you know, a lot of folks, they, they can't be without. So they end up uh, creating a lot of, you know, they create relationships or false relationships because of where they are and, and, you know, how often they move. And it also, you know, most of the time it leads to disappointment, man, because it's hard to really establish friends or friendships uh, at a later age, man, you know. Or the other, yeah, they have to do something or go through something with people to really establish a real bond. And I know in the military, like other branches, like the Marines and the army, where these guys are actually in combat and they're saving each other's lives and they're holding each other down. I can see how you can uh, establish relationships through that. But we all bring weird habits to the table. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's it's one of those things, man, that um, it's really hard to uh, 
it's it was it's been really hard for me to establish me being a jet mechanic. You know, I'm I'm not necessarily a uh, you know uh, what you would call a combatant. You know, I'm more of a target <laughs> because of what I do. Mm. You understand? I put jets oh, okay. in the air, and you know, our officers do the fighting. So uh, it was kind of it was kind of strange for us to really develop bonds. Now I've noticed that the, the bonds I did develop while I was deployed uh, were developed under conflict, right? So it's hard yeah. for those relationships to really flourish and be positive from that, oh, right? And, okay, yeah. and, and, them, and for them to be sustained, right? Because you have nothing else to really talk about but those times, and you know, no one wants to rehash Ooh, that. I'm glad you, yeah, glad you brought that up. I didn't see you get your. Oh, you got to walk over to your gym, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because cool. uh, other folks are in the gym right now, and I'm gonna move to the room here and get my dips oh, in. Get the dips in. Yeah. You can see the dip, dip right. There. You can see the dip right there. Let's see what these Alrighty. dips look like. All right, so I so you know what important with the dips, man, is that you want to keep your your body straight up and down, opposed to like leaning over. A lot of people like to lean over like this to get the chest, but I the like chest, to stay right. upright to isolate those triceps. So, Boom. The triceps. Okay. Boom. Right. You see yeah. that right there? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, man. So um, I like how you said that uh, creating um, friends, you know, during crisis moments. Um, yep. And then all you have is those moments to talk about. I'm gonna bring that up when we move when we when we get a little deeper into the discussion of friendships. But um, so let me ask you this: How, Well, for me, I have I have I have Dave, who is oh. my best friend, Woo. who's my Woo. best friend. And you know, it's funny to say like best friend. I'm not sure how many of our um of our you know our workout buddies that are listening um would agree with this. I know you would, Dave, but it's funny to to establish as a man it's funny to establish this best friend relationship because it's like it's a vulnerability right because you know uh, it's almost like it's almost like telling telling your partner that you love them first right it's like you don't want to yeah. tell a woman that you love them first because you know like, you're giving up a piece of yourself well, they right? have the they have the advantage <laughs> right they have the advantage right so it's like i tell you what my wife always holds that against me bro <laughs> <laughs> right, right so so it's like it's, it's even to say you're my best friend it's a it's like a it's like a proposal almost because it's like you want them to say that you're their best friend too right but they're my best friend and then i have a crew of, I have a crew. yeah i have a crew of um of best buds as well right like i got uh i got uh derek um who um you know our workout buddies are gonna meet in the future i got um just i got mo you know what I mean? I went to school with these dudes. I've yeah, known these dudes. dudes. Yeah, I've, I've known these dudes for forever, right? So I have an, another crew where I've been friends with them for 30 years. After that, the buck stops with those four gentlemen. The buck stops there, right? Um, all of the childhood friends that I've had, it's my set. All, oh, no, no, it's on you. All of the um, childhood friends that I've had, they, those friendships are done. They're not, even, they're not even friendships anymore. They're just like people that I may run into. Like, oh, yeah, remember that time? And then I keep it moving. The acquaintances. You know, any, the acquaintances. Anybody else outside of Dave, uh, Derek, Justin, Mo, anybody outside of those, that crew, um, their family. I have like a crew of cousins, and those are like my, my best buddies here in my, my area. How many, how many friends, how many real friends would you say you have, Dave? Oh, so of course I – look, I'm, I'm – I'm gonna get fancy. You're not fancy, but I'm gonna flip it on you. Of course, I got my wife, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. First and foremost, right? Of course. Um, but man, I got I got a partner of mine that we've been in the military 20 years together. We we both came in the same day, um, and we're about you know we're about to retire the same day. You know, my man. We you know we've held each other down ever since we've been in. Um, great friend, man. Awesome individual. Um, oh man. When I look at it, man, I you know, that's really hard. I mean, you know, of course, I got Sean. Sean's my, Sean's my man. Uh, you know, shout out to Sean. Uh, I love, man. Uh, Craig, you remember Craig? Craig's a good friend. Uh, Craig, yeah. Man, I, you know, I hate to, I hate to put, you know, because if you forget somebody, but I mean, good friends. I mean, this, this. How many man, would you say? Uh, if you give a number. You no, know, I say I have about five, like you. Five. Um. Yep. Yeah, I say about five guys that. You know, like I said, if I was to win the lottery tomorrow, man, I'd be I'd be at the front door with a suitcase. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, 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 right. You know? Exactly. That's a good you know? way to put it. So, too. so you know, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I would say so, man. I keep my circle tight, man. I'm a different type of individual, anyway, right? So I'm hard to get you along with. Five. I would say. Um, you would say that. So, you would yeah, say I would say about five. I, I, about I mean, five? you know, again, I don't like to get out much, and you know, that kind of uh, 
hurts relationships and stuff too. I'm a little recruit. I'm a, I'm a somewhat I'm of a recluse. So I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's move on. Let's get to started on the real part of the um the um first uh the real the real circuit of the arm workout and let's continue. All right. So what we got going? On? What's the next workout day? All right. So we're gonna be doing a dumbbell uh, cross body underhand okay. uh, curl. All right. So uh, pretty much, man, the focus of this exercise, man, uh, is to kind of accentuate the outer bicep here um, <clears throat> because uh, something that we neglect, hammer curls as well for our forearms. So the exercise pretty much is you're going to be reaching across your body with, right. with this grip here, with the hammer grip. So you're going to be working your forearms as well as that outer bicep. How far do I want my dumbbell to come up? Am I going to my cheek or am I going to the bottom of my chest? You want to basically make sure that the, uh, the, the tip here of your dumbbell kind of hits the yep. up, your upper chest. Upper chest. Yeah, there you so, go. There you go. That back. full extension, man. And what's that second one? What's the second part of our circuit? Second one is going to be just same way. Lean it over. Uh -huh. Make sure that your elbows stay straight. And you're going to extend them out. Boom. Uh -huh. Boom. Simple as that. Yeah. Like a slalom. Like a slalom. All right, I got you. Yeah, you know? Oh, cool. Yeah, like word. Like yeah, like like you're skiing, slalom. right? Nice. I like that. Right. I like your your set, Dave. Your set. All, All right, cool. cool. So you said you got you got a good, you got up to like five. You said you got about five, um, five friends, right? Um, all right. So research shows that most people most adults have two to five friends. About, I think it says like 61, 62% um, have two to five friends, right? And I think most of us want more, you know, because well, we, we, we kind of, we could use more because most of those two to five friends don't even live where we live, right? So they're like our best buds, our best friends, our closest friends, but they don't really get to see them every day, you know? And, and really, 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 we need friendships. You know, we go, we're in this generation now that says no new friend, no new, no new friends, or whatever you said, right? Um, they say we don't need new friends, but actually we do need friends. And the reason why is because it's good for our mental health. Hmm. Friendship, friendships, friend, having good friendships stifles, it, it stifles uh, depression. It hmm. increases joy and happiness, right? Hmm. And it, it, it um, what else? It um it helps alleviate stress, right? So friendship is a good thing, right? And our, we really our minds really crave it, but we try to convince ourselves that we don't need it. What do you think about All right. that? All right. Well, um, see, uh, you know, coming from a, you know, uh, I guess coming from your perspective, when you say best friends, right? Um, you you pretty much have like a brothers relationship, like the movies brothers, right? Yeah. You know, you got you got a group of guys that y'all you know y'all kick it every summer or whatever have you you guys uh, plan outings and uh you know that's going over 30 years as well over 30 years right yeah um so i can see how that's helped your mental health that's helped you go through but i'm on the contrary like i like to keep my circle small because as 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 much as it does help mental health i think it can contribute or to to the negative side of mental health too when things don't go right you know when, when, when things are wrong you know what i mean or when yeah. when friends are not really friends, right? Or they show the true colors sometimes. So like, like I said, I like to keep my circle, you know, again, I like to either deal with people that I've been through real things with or I've known forever. So their tendencies are pretty much, I, you know, I'm used to, I know, you know? Right. Um, so I'm on the, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm on the contrary of what you're saying. Um, just as long as I maintain those relationships, it's a lot of work keeping friendships sure. alive, bro. It's a lot right. of work, it's hard work, it, you know? Um, just like anything, just like business, just like marriage. It's hard work making sure that you maintain friendships. Now, like, again, luckily with us men, you know, it's one of those things where we could just pick up where we left off. We don't have to continuously check on each other, whatever have you, right? But sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes, you know, people are high maintenance and they require a little bit more and they're in their feelings. Like, I haven't heard from you for so long, you know? Yeah, but, man. You know, that's one of those things I struggle with too in the military, like checking in on friends because, you know, we, we go through so much sometimes and, you know, you want it, you, you know, you're almost inclined to check in, just make sure that they're, they're okay, you know, because suicide's at a high rate right now. So, yes, sir. You know, yes, sir. So, that's one of the things that I, you know, that I try to stay leery of. But yeah, it's really hard to try to maintain a lot of close friendships. It, it, it is. It's, it's just it what you said. It's just what you said. It takes work, right? It takes yeah. work. So, like, um, because you know me, man, I like way. to. Yeah, you know me. I like to. Um, I like to. Whatever we, whatever we discuss, I try to 
make sure that I look a little deeper into it, right? So, like, um, you know, I was curious about this work that it takes to foster a, a friendship, right? You know, they have studies and things like that out there. You know, so there's one study I was looking at. It says, it says it takes a, uh, in a study they were studying men, right? Um, you know, putting them in a in a room, locking them in a room together, pretty much like ten men. And it said it took about sixty hours of them being in a room together for them to foster some kind of friendship. And that's also like a conflict six, situation. Six hours, sixty, 60 hours, six, six zero, right? So it says, mm -hmm. it says it takes about 60 hours to foster a friendship. That's, um, that's now, weird. But that's weird, right? But then, yeah. we, and, 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 you know, that was a controlled, a controlled space. But they said on average, the average adult, American a, a adult, only spends about 41 minutes um, socializing per day, right? They only spend about 41 minutes socializing with someone, someone outside oh, of their family or their home. I don't believe that. Said, I don't believe that. that. Said, I don't believe that's what okay, the study said, said 2018, right? right? 40, it says, <laughs> actually, so now I guess you, it would depend on how you're defining socializing, right? Oh, you know, okay. because, you know what I mean, right? Because like, um, they said most, they said most friendship, most friendships uh, start from the workplace. A lot of adult friendships start in the workplace. So I guess if you look at the workplace as socializing, which you're not supposed to, um, then it probably <laughs> would be more than 41 minutes. Yeah. But that's you're right. That's my point. You're right. They're saying one of the main reasons, one of the, the point is one of the main reasons that adults don't don't uh, or find it difficult to to foster new friendships is because of because of the time that it takes because of the time that it takes to get a friendship going like nobody wants to spend the time or put forth the effort to um get the the, the new friendship you know popping you feel me yep yep yeah. it, it, no, we like never said like... what our rep set was on this we're doing three reps of what yeah, 15, we're gonna do three reps. We're gonna 10. do yeah, 12, 10, 8. Um All right, 12, 10, and progress 8. as far as weight. I know I cheated a little bit, I used the same weight, but I got a little too yeah. ambitious on the first set. You, you know, I always I used, stay on the I always stay on the yeah. same weight because I like to stay on camera because I got on and a cute fly mecca t-shirt. Yeah, fly mecca. <laughs> <laughs> so yo, uh, um <laughs> are you I lost my train of thought. I, playing around, playing around. All right, um, so we're gonna have yeah, we're gonna yeah, have yeah, to. We're gonna have to do our workout buddies at home say a fly make a t-shirt. Yeah, big time. Like, not <laughs> knowing why. Right? You know what it means. Not knowing why. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as it, yeah, it, it's, it's it's a tremendous effort. And for me, you know, I'm a very loyal individual. And man, I was gonna compliment you, man. You did like I said, you're the scholar. He's always got something, you know, to add to the, you know, some some kind of statistical, you know, uh, I guess uh inf information to add to the chat but yeah man um yeah it does take a lot of work man and like i said i'm a loyal guy so like i like to keep my circle small um be able because there's only so much in me man right right and uh that's a little bit too much to be able to have to deal with so many emotions and so many different uh styles of personalities <laughs> you right, know what i'm right. saying and so that's just it's no breaking for me that's just it's not something that uh i excel with and never never have man even in grade school you know I had a, uh, you know, a couple of guys that I dealt with, and that was pretty much it, you know. Um, and then I can really call that, you know, call them close friends either, because I hardly talk to any of those guys, man. I'm not as blessed as you, you know. <laughs> but uh, I tell you, like I said, I mean, I envy that relationship, man. That's a, that's an awesome, that's an awesome thing to have and foster for throughout the years, man. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely give props to you guys for being able to keep that going for so long, man. That's so awesome. Yeah, that's the Brooklyn crew. Yeah, BK that's crew. So awesome. But so you know, you, 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 you and, and I'll be honest with you, um, with, uh, 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 uh you know, I'll work out buddies at home, man. Um, I'll be honest with you. I'm only doing 10, uh, 10, uh, reps of this because I'm going from the hammer straight into the kickback and I feel my arm starting to swell up. That's you know, right. That's like, right. Uh, yeah. Look. Yeah. What? Yeah. Python, son. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yo, so I like how you told, you said you mentioned something about yeah you feel that uh, you mentioned something about um the friends that you had in the military came from conflict right and all y'all had it seemed like all y'all had was the conflict to refer back to right so one thing you know when we you know because there are a lot of reasons why adults don't foster friendships easily you know um you know and. Actually, I'm gonna hold off on the conflict. I'm gonna get back to that. Some other, let's talk about some of the other reasons why adults don't, um, you know, really foster friendships easily, right? Like, so 
you know, one is like the whole like time, the, the, the time, like you, it takes time and effort, right? And by the end of the day, we're working, we have families, somebody wants to have to put in that much time and effort into something new, you know, you don't really feel like you need it. The other thing is the embarrassment of it. Like we talked about like how weird it is to, you know, ask, you know, basically tell somebody they're your best friend, right? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, oh, strange. Where, so it's where strange. Where do we stand? <laughs> like, yeah, where do we bro. stand? Like, where, where, is, where are we going with this, you know? Get out um, of one, of my fa- one of my favorite movies, man, is I Love You, Man, right? Um, with uh, yeah. Paul Rudd, right? Um, and Jason yeah. Seale. Um, and, it, you know, they have this whole moment where he's like trying to find friends and he's going on man dates, right? And then they just have this moment at the end of the movie where he's just like, hey, I love you, man. He's like, I love you, yeah. Montana. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's this weird dynamic where you're trying to find out if someone really wants to be your friend and you're trying to let them know you want to be their friend as an adult. It's strange. So it's like an embarrassment. Um, right. But for me, man, for me, I would say I don't even struggle necessarily with that pride issue. With me, my main reason for not fostering new adult friendship um, is fear, right? And I would say huh. it's fear. It's fear because, like, when you're a kid, it's so easy for you to make friends because you could just have one thing in common, right? You you continue, and I'm gonna I'm gonna get me an extra one. Continue. Go ahead. All Go right. Ahead. Yeah, get you an extra one. All right. Yeah. So you can um you 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 as kids as children we get these friendships so easily because you have one thing in common. You like uh, playing skeleton. Or you <laughs> like, like Step Brothers. Yeah, yeah, like you just become best friends. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. We got so much room, so so many activities. For activities, <laughs> right? That movie was epic. Right. 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 right exactly. Yeah. But when you, become, when you become an adult, you know, it's like that one thing you have in common isn't enough, you know? So, but, you know, but also when you become an adult, your, your, um, your, your hope and your, um, what is the word? Your, 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 when you're innocent, your innocence is stolen when you're an adult, right? You know that not everybody is a good person. You know, you know you that, go. you know, you there can't you just have people around your children. You can't have people around there your you wife. You can't, you know what I mean? Like, I have a fear of that shit. And I don't exactly. want to go to prison because I befriended someone and then they like, you know, did some wild shit. And then I end up having to off with their head. You feel me? So I'm, I feel like it's better for me to just like protect me and my family, protect my mental space, like you said, and my energy, and not really be open to new friendships, man. And, and, and that's exactly what I you know, was talking about when we first talked about the military, man, because you see a lot of the infidelity within the service, man, because guys are gone for so long, man. And uh, right. I give you a story about one of my one of my partners. Uh, one of you know he was potentially you know would have been one of my good friends, man. Rest his soul, man. Brian Hoss. You know, basically when he began uh, when he began uh, service, you know we were both A one C together. Uh, he had a, a really good friend that he met in tech school, bro. And, you know our tech school is roughly around five to six months long. So you know, like you said before, you know you you quick to really establish. Uh, friendships based on something that you have in common. And these guys did. They were from uh, Pennsylvania. And anyway, you know, so, you know, as, as their friendship developed, man, they went to the same base together. Uh, we were stationed in Alaska. And this guy used to be at this dude's house when he wasn't there. That's the type of friends they were. What? Wow. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> exactly right. But it wasn't one of those things where, I mean, it wasn't for that reason, man. So she was sleeping with, she was sleeping with, uh, his, with his best friend pretty much. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. They found out through the babysitter. The babysitter kind of spilled the beans. And uh, so he basically told the guy, man, he brought him out to the woods, a secluded wow. area. And he said, look, man, he went, to, you know, he, he had a conversation with him. He said, look, I'm going to give you one opportunity. Man. Don't lie to me. He said, are you sleeping with my wife? He says, no. And then he commenced to, you know, he commenced to, you know, <laughs> to tear, tear him a new one, man. They said uh, yeah. it, was, uh, it was in the woods and it was a lake nearby. And it was a guy, I guess, fishing in the lake. He said he could hear the impact. <laughs> he basically oh, put this wow. guy... He, he, he basically put this guy in, in, in uh, intensive care for about two two weeks or so. Broke oh, his jaw, wow. broke his ribs. Did Yeah, put a hurting on him. And pretty much, you know, so it's one of those things where, you know, he invited this element into his life, and that's, that was the outcome now. It takes two to tango, right? So, again, you know, uh, his friend is to blame, but, yeah, so is his wife, right? So, that I mean, that's one right. of those things you got to be looking for, you know what I mean, uh, in that sense. But... <clears throat> Yeah, you're right, man. Just even the pass, somebody to make a pass, it just that's hurtful yeah, as well. Yeah. Like you, yeah, you invited this yeah. individual into your world, and then it's like, man, now you're trying to take advantage. So yeah, you're right about, you know, us being at this certain age, and it's like not wanting that element. And that's 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 me in a nutshell. Like, now, I'm not necessarily, I'm secure. I'm not necessarily worried about like something happening, but it's just like you said, the 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 you know the attempt alone would just kind of right. set you off, man. So yeah, yeah, uh, I don't, hell I don't yeah, need that in my life. Man. 
I don't need yeah. that in my life, you know. So to violate that. Yeah. Well, we yeah. you and your that was your last set, right? I'm yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yo, I like that exercise right there, bro. I like that circuit together. Um, yeah. especially on that on that kickback. I could still feel it in my bicep, but of course I could feel uh-huh. the pull in my tricep too. And, yeah, I like and you that. know the, and the key to it, it, man, you have to stabilize, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you yeah, know, you're right not there. cheating on a machine, you have to keep it going. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I like that. I'm ready for the right. next circuit, man. Keep this conversation All right. going. All right, you back in PE with Dave and Jay. Arm day. We're talking about friends. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, What's man. our next exercise, D? All right, yo. So this is a shout out to Jeff Cavalier. Um, you know, this is where I first found out about this workout, you know, uh, for dumbbells. It's called the, it's a dumbbell weighted curl. All right. So pretty much you're going to be holding your dumbbell like you're holding a platter. That's why they call it the weighted curl. Okay. And uh, so for me, I'm, I'm you know, um, I'm supported on this bench like I'm doing a scab trap. Um, <clears throat> and uh, just pretty much at a 30 degree angle, I believe that this is. This is. And as you can see from my massive biceps, right? The extension here, <laughs> Yeah. right? Easy, massive. easy. So, I, so like I said, I'm supporting pretty much this dumbbell with my fingertips and I'm bringing it up to my face. Right? Is my hold and right what, here? Am I holding right here? Yep, you, you got it, yep. Right. I'm gonna do mine pretty standing. Much. And so Jay is modifying, right? Because I feel he can't, that. Because I don't have a bench to use right now. Exactly, yeah. so folks at home, if you don't have a bench, no worries. We can do it. Yeah, right? you're still going to get no it excuses. in. No excuses. No right, excuses. From there, right? from, there, from there, we're going to um, what? All right. Let me adjust here. So from there, I'm going to put my bench down. And I'm going to grab me an easy bar here. This is what an easy, ah, okay. this is an easy bar. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to do the goal crushers. All right, this is, this is pretty much the motion here. I'm bringing the weight here, and I'm coming up. Yeah, a little skull crusher. So you're coming past your skull. You're going yeah, past sure. your skull, all right. And the reason why I'm doing that is because better range of motion, like I always say, right? I'm going yeah. past my skull, and so what I'm doing is I'm engaging my tricep on the concentric to be yeah. able to to bring it up, so I'm, work, I'm 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 overloading the muscle here. You know what I mean? Got it. Me, I'm going to do my standing. I'm going to be here. I'm going to come past my skull, and I'm going to come straight up. All right, straight up. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. So, Dave, nothing so have you ever had a have you ever had a friendship? Have you ever had a friendship that? Um, was like what they, you know, it's an overused term, but I'm gonna use it anyway, a toxic friendship, one that didn't serve you anymore, one that, you know, you you knew that you needed to, you needed to get out of the friendship. I mean, have you experienced that before? Oh, uh, man, all the time, man, um, all the yeah. time. You know, as you're coming up, you know, in, in certain situations, uh, you meet people that you have something in common get with. And, I'm gonna get and my you, and you, Yeah, 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 and you foster a relationship based on whatever, like, so back in the day, I used to pump herbs, like, a lot. And when I went down to North Carolina, man, I, I, I you know, I was friends with a, with a buddy down there, man. Uh, and again, he, he basically used me, man. He abused me and stuff. And I, I didn't really know a lot of people out there, so I just wanted to score some trees. So pretty much, you know, that was my, that was my road dog, and that's what we would do all the time. And it kind of ruined my life, to be honest with you. Damn. Um, and, yeah, so, like, we became tight off that, but like you said, he just – he, I'm a loyal guy, so he kind of abused that relationship, man. And um, that definitely needed closure, man, because he wasn't really my man. You know, he didn't really have my best interest at heart. So, right. um, yeah, I had to close it off. So, I mean, that's just one example of, uh, you know, toxic relationship, man, because if I, you know, he was, I won't say a low life, man. I ain't gonna talk about people like that, but he didn't have much going on for himself at the time. So um, we, we weren't a match. And the thing is, I was, I was becoming him. Just by being around it, man. Oh, wow. A lot of people yeah. don't. A lot of people don't understand that, man. You know, your subconscious picks up regardless. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have yeah. to emulate this person. Their, their, their. You know, their habits are pretty much gonna. You know, uh, you're gonna absorb some of their, some of their crap. I mean, just listening to the way people talk. I mean, just how do you absorb that? Your subconscious listens to that as well and absorbs that. The subconscious doesn't have doesn't dif- differentiate between good and evil. You understand what I'm saying? You are the company you keep. keep. You are the exactly. company you keep, right? So like, yeah, yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, pretty Definitely. much. Yeah, I have run into those situations. You've run into those. Sure. We all run into those situations, right? And um, you know, so you gotta you gotta th- deal with cutting the person off, right? 
lots of reasons that uh you know like, you could you gotta pay attention to the signs right they, there's this whole red flag thing going on right now on twitter and all the socials you know there's some red flags when it comes to friendships because you know we're, we're encouraging you to to foster adult friendships because it's good for your mental health um but we're not saying you know bypass red flags you know for instance if, let everybody uh, in a, yeah, yeah don't let everybody in man so like like they said like some relationships, um, the person may be a negative person, you know, and if you made a goal to disregard negativity in your life because it's going to get you the way you want to go, you know, you know, maybe you need to cut that friendship off. Or some people are users and abusers, you know, some people are just, you know, some friendships are just one sided, you know, um, you know, there are lots of signs that a friendship isn't, isn't good for you anymore. Right. Huh. But, but how do you go about cutting that friendship off once you, Decide, right? Uh, how do you uh, how do you communicate? Because Dave said something to me one time, man. I was telling him about somebody, and you know, I told him my my approach. I told him my approach was. <laughs> well, I know what you want to say, Dave. You want to say segue? Uh, <laughs> my my uh, approach my approach was, you know, just to not talk to the person anymore. You know, when he hits me up, I don't answer. You know, if I see him in the street. I go the other direction, you know, and Dave is like, why? You know, it's not like you owe him money. You know, Dave is like, and he, you know, he eloquently puts things sometimes, you know, like he said, you need to communicate co closure. We're adults, right? Yeah, communicate yeah. the closure, man. It's my set, Dave, stop cheating. Oh, stop cheating. you got me, you got me, you got Talk me. Talk to me about communicating this. closure, I love Dave. this. Yeah, I hey, do. man, so you, you already, <laughs> hey, look, man, you already, you already know. You, should, you already said it for me, right? Hey, look, we're grown ass men, and if we can't handle each other, if we can't handle ourselves in that manner, man, there's no point in having friendships, right? Because you're already you're already tainting the relationship, not being truthful and honest, right, from the jump. Um, yeah, you just don't. Yeah, we're too old for this. You don't need that that type of negativity in your life. It's like, look, you don't have no time for this, man. Um, life is too expansive. Life is too short to be wasting time, right? Right. Like, look, like, look here, man. Like, and it's not like. So, so to, I guess for lack of better terms, right? <laughs> you know, we're not bitch, man, but it's just like, yo, homie, like, like, yeah, I mean, I, I, you know what I'm saying, real talk. Like, I think that's what we're, we're trying to avoid. We're trying to avoid, I guess, being effeminate, right? And just saying, hey, right. man, like, this ain't working out, right? <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Like, whoa, 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 what was this? We were dating? Like, nah, it's just like, like, right, I, right, right, I, right. I just want to let you know. I just want to let you know, like, like, again, like, yeah, like the next time you call, like, bro, like, honestly, I like, mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, this. I, you know, actually, like, now that we're talking about it, <laughs> now that we're sitting there talking about it, right, I find it weird, and I, and I understand why people do it, but I find it weird to even convey those words, to say those words, to say that, like, you know, we're not, you know, like, we're not compatible, right? Like, you know, Absolutely, like, that's right. not, so, like, so as men, we just tend to, like, let it just fall off. Fall off, right. But, right. but the thing is, if it's mutual, that works. If it's mutual, that works, right? right. If you're not the right pair, if you're not, right. you know, like, just, for, you know, as far as friends are concerned, it's if it, yeah, if it's mutual, it works. But if the other party is still like, yo, that's my man, it's that's my man, it, yeah. and you're yeah. not, so like that's when I think that it has to, you know, you have to convey, you know, you gotta something say something, something, right? You gotta like, say like, something. Yo, like, like, look, bro, like you know, what I'm saying, like, yo, it's, you know, what I'm saying, like, you know, uh, I, <laughs> it's funny because I can't even it think feels, of something. It to feels say. funny to say, but, right? Right, right, right. But I mean, I think I would be able to if time, if if if, if you know, if, if that can. opportunity, if that opportunity was permitted to me, like I think I would find the right words, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, it just it yeah, is what I, it is. I, but I, I don't run into. I think you would. I don't run into too many of those situations because I don't let nobody in anyway. You don't let. I'm gonna you know say because I mean? you don't let you don't let my friends <laughs> in anyway. You're like yeah, I'm so, not even gonna know. deal with this with the possibility. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you know, so I think uh, I can't remember which who it was, but someone made that statement about a year or two ago. You know, she was like, "This relationship no longer serves me." You know, and you know, uh -huh. it's social media, right? <laughs> right? 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 And I think she was talking. Uh -huh. She was talking in terms of like a, a like a a love relationship, right? Oh, um, but, okay. You know, but I think I think it's a brilliant way. Well, you know what? I, I won't even say it's a brilliant way. I think you have to communicate that you no longer want this relationship, right? And there's nothing anyone can say that should make you feel bad about that, you know? And you can say that it doesn't serve you, it no longer serves you, um, but that sounds kind of selfish, 
you know so you can you can communicate it in a way that says you know i just want to be real with you um the friendship was what it was but it's not real i think we're going in different directions or you could say it's it's me it's not you or it's you no. it's not me hey, hey. <laughs> you could say i got one what? i got one it's your set I, I, it's your set i got All one right. hey hey so it'd be cool in this segment if we were to pull up you know that 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 scene from Juice when your man uh, Tupac shot uh, Steel was like, "Yo, we ain't crew no more." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we ain't crew much, no more. You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> I mean, if we want to, you know, what I'm saying if we want to add some bravado to this, right? It's just like, nah, man, like, like nah, you know, I'm not your man's in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not like, you know, this. It's not what this is not what you think it is, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. Right. Um. But yeah, I think I think because it's it really is. Difficult to convey that. That's why we're, you know, we have an aversion to it. Um, we just let things kind of slide off. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of dealing with that now. And and, and, and a part of it, it, you know, part of me doesn't want to let go because I worry about people's mental health too much. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I've been yeah, thinking yeah, like, yeah. you know, people are going through things and, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I'm not sure if, it, if they're going through things or it's me, right? Um, and again, I feel funny even talking about this like this. But it'd be like, you know, like I said, and, and again, I'm a loyal individual, man. And until you give me a reason to say, like, yo, man, like, like, bro, like, just let it go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't we don't match up. You know what I'm saying? We, we're going in different directions. I'm going to persist. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially if I if I valued you, your friendship at some point. And, you, and I you of, feel that's sort of good. And that's a that's a major point, man, because a lot of people feel indebted to their relationships, to their friendships. Right. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned before like um, fostering a friendship. Because real shit, a lot of adult friendships, they die out, they fizzle out because of the way that they come about. So you come about a relationship, like I said, I think 60% or something come about relationships from their work. A lot of people switch jobs or a lot of people um, move and things like that. So that relationship is gonna fizzle. Um, a lot of relationships, like 31% come about from like other friendships. So you, you're good friend, me and you are good friends. And then me and Sean might become good friends. And right. that might fizzle right. out because it, it was a it was a connection that was through you. But when you have these adult friendships that you just foster all on your own, right? You know, you feel indebted. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. When you have these relationships that come about because of conflict, because of something mm. that you went through with the person, you feel indebted mm -hmm. to that person. So you mentioned their, yep. mental, their mental health and things, right? You feel indebted yeah. to them. But, right. but what you both have got to realize is that... It, you start to just dwell on that conflict. Even if yep. you're no longer, neither of you in that, in that space anymore, you tend to just have conversations about what you went through still. It could be 12 years ago, you know, but you still talk about the shit that you went through. Both of y'all could be millionaires now, but you still talk about the time when you were broke because that's all y'all had as a bond. And so Man. if it no longer works, you've got to be comfortable and strong enough and love yourself enough to say, I'm not even in that place anymore. I'm never going to let myself be in that place again. So there's no reason for me to keep this relationship with you if that's all we had. You feel me? Yeah. Okay, and, 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 I think we were supposed to do three. We were supposed to do three of uh, 15, 12, and 10. I'm going to hit an eight. I'm going to hit a drop set. All right, dope. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, like I did. So I, got, I had a friend of mine that came down not too long ago. Um, and we got cool when uh, we went to the desert together, man. And uh, we were under tremendous stress. Um, and, you know, he pretty much felt, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't have my job. Like, well, I mean, he, be, he basically had a different job and they kind of like uh, basically recruited his efforts uh, to help me out because uh, we were under man. And he basically felt my world for a good six, seven months. And uh, mm. we bonded off that, right? Because he wasn't yeah. used to that type of stress. And uh, like even today, like when we, we, we met up, you know, of course, I'm on a different vibe. I'm on a positive vibe. You know, there was that, that part wanted to come back up, but I had to shut it down. You understand what I'm right. saying? And I wanted to see if I can reach a different plane with this individual, like to say, look, man, you know what I'm saying? There's more. There's more to us than that. Right. There's more. You know what I mean? Like, right. And, yes, and it, was, it was success. It was successful. So sometimes you can break through that barrier um, right. and, 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 you know, and build and build on the relationship, you know, despite the, the conflict or whatever have you. And, and, that, was, and that was successful. And so I'm, I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah. That's dope, yeah. man. So, that's dope. Yeah. 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 That's dope. But we both agree, you know, listen to Dave and listen to me. Um, if, a, if the relationship or the friendship just isn't really positive or moving in a positive direction or, you know, or, or even something as simple as this, Dave, 
and folks working out with us at home, right? Even if when you spend time with the person, you feel worse than you did before you got there. That's an energy vampire. If you feel wow. worse every time you're around someone, stop being around someone. It's like if I drink too much on Saturday night, Dave knows that I'm not going to be able to get in the gym on Sunday. So what do I have to stop doing? Drinking so much on Saturday night. This doesn't serve me anymore, right? So these relationships, if they, if they make you feel worse, just cut them off, man. But don't, don't ghost them. Communicate the closure, man. Oh. Communicate the closure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, look, and I apologize to any of my friends from back in the day when I was a negative Nancy. I was probably the worst. Um, person to be around. I was one of those vampires, man, but it's a new age, man, for me. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah, again, like I said, I want to apologize for that, because as you said that, you know, like I said, I kind of reflected on a lot of the conversations I used to have about, you know, with my, with, with some of my good friends, like like my buddy I was telling you about, man, Kev, that, you know, we've been in 20 years. I, I used to just, like, harp on the, the negative crap all the time, and that's all we used to talk about, man. And it was right. just like, man, you know, like, this is a good person. This is a, This is a good friend. I don't want to right. ruin that. And I remember at one point, I mean, I was talking to him and I said, I said, bro, man, I could tell that I, I lost you in the conversation, man. Like, you know, we were having uh, a great one and then we started harping on the military and all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'll never again will do that. I will never again right. dwell on that stuff, man. Cause you, you know, he's far too great of a friend to lose him or, you know, you know, for, for some, some crap that I'm, I'm bringing up. Right. And after yeah. that, man, things started to flourish, man, because it's like, that, that, you know, it's just, that's just, you know, like I said, it's whack. Like, well, how are we building? How are we making any progress? continuously yeah. talking about things that bring us down right so like Absolutely. Uh, one thing i can say about you though dave because you know you know i'm always gonna i'm always gonna build you up right one um because we build while we build but listen man you may have been a negative person at one point but you are definitely a good friend in the sense that you you care enough about your friendship you care enough about your friendships where a friend can try to ghost you like i did I'll go to Dave for years, man. And Dave mm. did not stop reaching out to me. And the reason, mm. the reason why, because I would, I would have probably stopped reaching out to me. The reason why I, um, <laughs> I go for real shit. Real shit. The reason why, because, because we already discussed, like, adults don't have enough time to be trying to nourish friendships, you know, especially if it's a friendship that isn't just growing, you know, or if they're, they're not, if they're absentee. The reason why I disappeared as a friend years ago is because I was into shit that I wasn't even proud of. I was into negative shit and I knew it. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't come to, to, to my oldest friend and, you know, one of my longtime friends and be in the condition that I was because I wasn't prepared to be checked. You feel me? So rather than mm. coming to him all fucked up, I just faded to black. And then when, I, when he, and he never stopped reaching out, never stopped reaching out. And then finally, when I felt like I was prepared to be the, my best self or a better version of myself and a better friend, then we started talking again. And guess yeah. what he did? He told me that I was fucked up for doing that, but he forgave me. <laughs> yep. Big time. He Big didn't time, communicate man. closure with me, bro. He was like, nah, you nah. want this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, ready, right. you, ready right. to, you ready to move to the next, the, our last uh, Hell yeah. Step? Boom, you back in PE with Dave and Jay. Guess who I am? <laughs> guess who he is? That's my guy. Yeah. Great All conversation right. on friendships, man. If you missed the conversation, you joined us at the end of the set. Do better. Dude, yeah, man. Stop playing. <laughs> Work harder. Nah. Stop playing. But, um, yeah. Nah, but if you did miss it, man, go back and catch that workout. It was a great arm day. We finishing up with triceps, right, Dave? Triceps and a little bit of biceps, right? So what for the got? first for the first set, you know, we're gonna we're gonna hit the tricep, you know, because we're on these benches, and you know, this is what afforded to us right now. I'm on. The same setup that you saw last week uh, with the rails. I'm doing a chest press, but I got the guard set up so that I don't extend all the way down and, and I'm utilizing oh, all my chest, okay. my triceps, right? Okay. And I'm also utilizing somewhat of a close grip, closer than you would uh, normal chest press to isolate the triceps. Man, the exercise goes as this. All right. All right. So I'm here. I'm going to bring her out. And I'm gonna bring it down to the bars, right? I don't want it to totally rest on the bars, but I'm just gonna bring it down to show you guys. And I'm bringing it up. And I'm using my triceps, man. And little I'm chest. using them triceps, little chest, yeah. But that's mostly that's, triceps. And that's pretty much that, okay? And then I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move on to these uh, dumbbell full supination curls. All right. So the exercise sits is this. I'm gonna curl it up, and I'm gonna ah, twist to the man. outside. Love so look, man, exercise. as far as the muscle, you notice that there's a difference 
right when you turn your your fist in certain directions. That's why, man, variations mm -hmm. of hammer curls and, and you know different variations of curls are important for your muscle development for bicep development, man. There's oh, a yeah. different chords here, man. You know what I mean? It's not just the straight up uh, straight arm uh, curl. So that helps that little movement there. All right, yes, that day. Yeah, you know, it's you know, um, all right. So someone someone brought up a conversation. You know, it's always a conversation, but they brought it up to me um, just yesterday, man, asking me. You know, you know, when I talk about from Brooklyn, they're like, "Oh, so who would you say you, you know your top, the top five rappers, top five MCs of all time is?" Right? I'll be honest, man. I don't really like that question because I like a lot of different. <laughs> I, I like a lot of different stuff, man. A lot of different styles, yep. right? It all depends um, on your mood, right? You know? yeah. yeah, your mood, right? You know. So, yeah. um, but I'm gonna I'm pose that question because I know a lot of people like to chime in on that, and I know you love this. You love this topic. Woo! So, who, who yes, would sir. you say? Who would you say are your um? You know, give, give me give me your first one. We're gonna talk top five. Tell me why. Um, All right, because this is real. Because this is real. Said, I'm gonna get started. Yeah, because this is real, and we ain't in here bullshitting. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to you right after this set. Okay, so top five, man. So what you want to do this? You want to do this blow for blow, or you want me to just give you my, my five and then you know what I'm saying? Give me, give me your, give me your, your, your give me your, your blow for blow. We'll do blow for blow. All right, blow for blow. Number one. Number one all time for me is common sense, all right? Okay. Common all right. sense, all right. So body of work, first and foremost, um, is incredible. I get in the beginning when he was called common sense, he was a little off, but he was right for the times. You understand what I'm saying? Um, you know, he went a little left with the electric circus, but came right back with like water for chocolate. You know, uh, well, actually like water for chocolate was before that, but still, uh, you know, uh, B, has to be one of my fa most uh, my favorite album of all times. Um, just a classic Kanye produced, just amazing body of work. And then the thing is, man, the dude just puts out content, man. Like each lyric has 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 meaning. You know what I'm saying? Each bar has meaning. So he's undeniable. Common is just one of those dudes, man. Like, and you know what? Quiet as cat. I always used to tell you, <laughs> you know, he reminds me of you. You know what I'm saying? Just the the vibe, the you know positivity, man. Just a just a down to earth individual, man. And, and Common just loves. He loves the art, man. He loves the art form, man. It's undeniable, you know, just shows in his, in his body of work, man. That's my number one of all time, man. Seriously. I said number one. Okay. All right. Now, yeah. I'm doing these right? Let me see. Yeah, you got it. I, I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I would move this back. One, um, yeah, we go. Go, ahead and go. go ahead and specify. Specify for our um, workout buddies at home, man, um, what, what this is. Because it, it's not, it's a little more than how you described it. So as I do the motion, I want you to just describe what I'm doing here. All right, all right, guys. So this is a super nation curl, right? So as I described, man, you know, like I said, when you know your when your fists are in different positions, man, your muscle kind of contracts in a different manner. So super nation kind of helps that helps you get that bubble, you know what I mean? That that yeah. get that rock appearance in your bicep. And so basically you're coming across the body, right? And at the very end of the curl, instead of just kind of coming up, you're, you're you're giving it a twist. And that's what gives you that that rock appearance. That's what tightens up that uh, contraction in your bicep. It's very important. This is another thing that people lack, I mean, that people miss and they don't, you know, you see like folks, they, they look strong, but they don't have like a, a real defined appearance with their bicep. You know, most of the time, man, you know, like when you want to look for that separation between your bicep and your elbow or your forearm, that's yeah. the workout you want. That nice that's little, my, that my wife to. likes that. It's like, it looks yeah. like boom, boom, boom. That's what she always says. Yeah. Your arm you looks go. like there boom, boom, boom. I'm like, yeah, baby. There you go. You like that. Yeah, yeah. You all know right, what I mean? So. All right, that's pretty much you're set. I like common. Oh. I love common. Common changed hip hop for me. Um, you know, my common story is, of course, um, like water for chocolate. All, one of my all time favorite hip hop, all time favorite hip hop uh, album. I'm not sure if you ever eat chocolate, but whenever I eat chocolate, I always want water. The album, the title just makes sense to me. But um, <laughs> the way that the, <laughs> the way that the album starts, man, it starts with um, something called time traveling. He got, a, he got a song oh. called Time Traveling. That's how that album starts. I'll never forget the first time I heard it. Um, and matter of fact, I'm gonna listen to it when we get out of here. Trumpets. I love trumpets in hip hop, bro. Like, so if you're an artist that is using a, a, a real trumpet, you know, man, I love Swiss beats. Love like Swiss beats, so yeah. yeah. I love, yeah. I love the, the real, I've always been a guy who loves a, a natural sound in hip hop. So Common is one of my all time favorites. Of course, dope ass lyricist, always has a positive message. You know, a good brother, man. He just seems to be a good a good dude, you know? And shout out to Common because 
it's a video that I saw on social media where it's just some little local rapper who was out on the streets. I don't know where he was, uh, maybe Vegas or California, something like that, just out there, just spitting. Dude was just out there like a little street artist, spitting. Common passes by him. Common starts freestyling with the kid, you know? And Ill, it was just Ill, all love, Ill. man. That's ill, man. That's ill. Common has never gotten too big for hip hop, man. I like that. I'm with you on that, all right? So my set, what's your, what's your number two? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. So you telling me, I don't want to be off camera here, but you telling me, you telling me Tom is your number one? No, okay. he's not my number one. He's not my number oh. one. He is definitely oh. my one. Oh, okay. So you're, you're kind of just commenting on my list. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I got common, you. Common, common is your number one, like number one. Common, is, common is my number one, bro. Like, okay. maybe okay. we should have so went common. backwards. Maybe we should have no, no, went no, backwards on this. It's good, but, it's good. No, you know, no, no. You kind of have that climactical common. feel, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, yeah. So number one, so number my number two. My number two is Black Thought, okay? For wait, 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 wait. Matter of fact, matter of fact. You, okay, go ahead. Give me Black Thought. I was going to say, I was going to give you my number one, but it's cool. It's cool. Go ahead. Give yeah, Black do thought. that. Do that. Okay. Do that. But I mean, I mean, like nah, I said, it's always so, so real. Tell me about Black right. Thought. Why Black Thought? Black Thought. Come on, man. Why Black Thought? Black Thought is diabolical, bro. Like that, I don't even know. I can't even, <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess, you know, uh, I think, um, so I didn't really get to to, to really uh, witness uh, the Roots First Project in person to, 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 you know, to, for lack of better terms, right? Like I didn't really catch it when it first came out. I uh, listened to Illidelf so Halftime, album? right? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah Illidelf yeah. Halftime was like my first introduction to the Roots and that song, um, Things That They Do, you know what I'm saying? Never do but the things they that they do. do. That they you remember do, that video? That they do. You remember that I don't video? Remember the video right? But I, I, I or they would make it fun of like they would make it fun of like you know mainstream hip hop and how they you know they be fronting and they have like the cars uh -huh. and champagne the girls and it's yeah. like yo I like this like who are these Man. dudes? Yo I like this and it was just like and it was a jazz it was a jazzy sound and Black yeah, Thought was just killing it with the lyrics right I'm like yo these dudes are fantastic and I love that live band sound and I love the fact that they utilize real instruments that's real music to me but the thing right. is man when you look at Black Thought's body of work and you start listening to him yo he never comes whack never comes whack man and the thing is it's effortless man it's effortless the alliteration just the the, the what's it called the multi syllabic uh, 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 you know, dude, he's just amazing. I can't even, I can't even break that down. You know what I'm saying? It would take me forever to really like, you know, uh, convey that, you know, how much I love his, you know, his art form. But Black Thought is Ooh, absolutely so amazing. And, and there's nobody, like lyrically, like there's nobody can verse him. And he even said that, nobody can touch him. And then when he dropped that freestyle, he really, I like that 10 minute freestyle on Funk Flex, he really showed the world that he was, he was, he's the best. Like he's a monster. Like you don't want to go against him. It's, you know, again, like you know, we talked a little bit about freestyle, not necessarily being freestyle. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 definitely. But again, it was still a contribute, you know, great contribute uh, contribution to the art, to the art form, and just to let these young cats know what true skills are. You know, what true skills are, man. Straight Shout up. out to Black Thought. Shout out to the Roots, Black man. Thought Absolutely, amazing. Black Thought amazing is dope. Talent. Um, amazing Roots, talent. You know, actually, I was telling you one of my favorite verses is on that um, on that uh, joint he got with Erykah Badu. Things Fall Apart. I, things, things Fall things Apart fall is apart. my favorite album. Yeah, I like Phenology too, but Things Fall Apart is my favorite album. Um, yeah. But um, we were living in the same building on the same floor and never met before until I'm overseas or on tour. What? Yeah. He said, she said that. He, he said she caught, she said she caught my show at Paris at Elise Momont and said I stepped off the stage and took a piece of her heart. A piece of her heart, yeah. He said we knew from the start that Things Fall Apart but we like get, that shit don't matter. When I get home, get at it through letter phone, whatever. Let's link, let's get together. This is my part. Shit, you think not? You think the thought got home and forgot? God, it forgot what? You see what I'm saying? I yeah, I see what you're saying. All right, so look, this is my number. So, so comment is probably my number three. All right. Comment's number three. My number one, come on, man. Come on, man. It's Dre 3000, bro. It's not my oh. number one. Oh, no, that's that's not my number one. Represent the A. Oh, that's my number one, bro. Dre I, I three thousand and and Dre three thousand and he came to me in adulthood, right? Uh, well, he came to me around the same time that um, around the same time that uh, Common and 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 my and my number two came around, right? But I really really started to emulate him in the music that I would make 
when I used to make mm. music and people would hear it. People would say, yo, you sound, and I wasn't really trying to sound like Drake 2000. It's just, I listened to so much of his music and I really just like, I just like his incorporation of so many different forms of expression, you know? So um, yeah, Drake 3000 is definitely not my number one. Um, and he has a way of making positive music, but also, you know, he could still be ratchet or, you know, he can, he can have a conscious message, but still like have fun. You know, and I really like that. I really like that about um, about Dre 3000. Also, there's this whole movement now down here. I'm not sure if you've heard of it or it is a hashtag. I can't remember. I'll, I'll drop the link. But basically, people <laughs> people get a kick. People get a kick out of um, seeing Dre 3000 um, in public, right? Because he's just such, such a regular guy. You know, he's like kind of. He's a. I think he struggles with social like anxiety common. and things like that. He, but he, but Common like is more out there. Common is more out there. Oh, okay, he's more of an extrovert. Yeah, he, he's a, he's yeah. an extra, he's a, yeah, he's an introvert. Yeah, um, Tracy Thousand is an introvert. So like when people see him, like he'll just be like, he'll just be like at a park checking out a, a local a local venue, you know. And he he's always got this flute, this big wooden flute that he'd be playing. So people like will he'll be sitting behind them and they'll like take a video or take a picture real quick. You know, like it's a Dre spotting, it's a Dre three thousand spotting. It's a whole like movement now where people spot Dre playing his flute. Shout out to Dre three thousand. I would say, um, I would say, if anybody asked me of one person that I would love to meet, love to have lunch with, and get a chance to just like kick it with and pick his brain, or just like whatever, take some advice from, my number one person would be Dre three thousand. All right, Amazing so yeah, that's time. my that's my number one. That's my number one. Number one. You know what? All right, so what's your, what I'm gonna do one? is. Oh, so I gave you my one. I gave you my two. Yeah. Number three. Number three. All right. So this is this was a tough one, right? right. When you when you hear the rest, you're gonna understand why. But my number three has got to be Nas. Okay. Um, yo. So like Nas, Nas to me, I, like I I I feel like like you know the reason why I I, I deal with Nas is because I think uh, we have, you know, I can I can relate to his flow, right? Nas is a cool, mellow fellow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's a, he's a, he's a. <laughs> I'm almost started, you know, about it's to kick over his rhymes, but like, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but like, no, nah, he's a, he's a chill, laid back individual. Okay, and uh, the way, the way I see it is, you know, he gets slack because they were like, well, th Nas wasn't a thug. It's like, well, he didn't have to be a thug to be, you know, to to, to be <sighs> as ill as he is. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a, they say he's the type of guy that looked out his window. And basically, you know, wrote stories based on what he, what he, you know. And I kind of feel the same way. Like I'm not a thug. Right. I was never a thug. I never portrayed to be a thug. They used to call you. Didn't they call you terrorist boy? Didn't they call you terrorist boy? You know what I mean? Like you know, they called me terrorist boy because I was on punishment a lot and I couldn't come outside and hoop. But I'm gonna tell you what. When I, I got my handles right on that terrace, and when I came outside, I was breaking cat's ankles, right? Yeah, but anyway, I was anyway, just telling man, my daughter about that yesterday. Yo. I was just telling my daughter about that yesterday. <laughs> anyway, one go of ahead. the ill handles in Plaza, right? Yeah, they got it. Right? <laughs> You know, anyway, <laughs> and anyway, so Nas was that type of individual that was very observant, very intelligent individual, man. And I, and I, like I said, I see some similarities in myself as far as that. Don't necessarily need to be in a mix to understand the mix, right? And right. like I said, he just he's an awesome lyricist, and he's the greatest storyteller aside from Slick Rick that ever done it in um in hip hop. Like greatest storyteller, man. Every time if you look up like online, just like the greatest stories in hip hop, man. Blazer Fifty. And the one I um I used to love her. What no, not I used to love her. Oh man, what was the song when he talked about like how you know he came home from vacation and his wife was 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 fucking another dude? Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I don't know the name of that song right now, man. But I'm just saying, pretty much pretty much you get it. Nas, Nas top three. Uh, like I said, one of the best storytellers to ever do it. Um, I like the story. Amazing. I like the story. I like the story he tells about when he was a gun. It's like I'm a gun. yes. It's like yes. I'm a fucking gun. Or, or, or rewind, or you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yo, the man, the, my man, perspective. the man yeah. is the man is amazing. Like, exactly. straight up, like, again, Nas top three. And the thing is, he's still doing it. King's Disease, one and two, epic. Those are dope albums. Epic. Especially epic. King's Disease, so, too. Like, I like King's yo, Disease, too, um, better than, than even the first one. Yo, dope album. Uh, dope album. Uh, okay. All right, all right. You're set. My, um, my number three. No, no, no. My number three is Colin. I already said that. My number two. So my number three is coming. My number one is Dre 3000. My number two shouldn't even be a surprise. Most deaf. Ah. Ah. I, I should really, to be honest with you, really, I shouldn't even have to explain. But many of no. our um, workout partners, many of our workout buddies um, at home, maybe they're not most deaf fans. So I, empl I implore you, I encourage you 
Love your soul and love your life better if you're not a most deaf, most, uh, deaf listener. Go and get Black on both sides. Matter of fact, you, yeah, don't even start with Black Star Movement with him and Talib. Don't even start there. Go and get Black on both sides. That'll give you a good introduction in, into who most deaf is. Then you can go get uh, Black on both sides. I mean, get, go, go get Black Star Movement because that that's heavy. Black um, Star! Woo! <laughs> most deaf, man. Um, poet. Poet. Orator, author, artist, freaking um, uh, cinephile, fucking uh, thespian, fucking, you know, it, it, this man can do anything with, with some cornrow braids in his head. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Talking about, um, talking oh. about, I'm, I'm talking about, he, he had this, he just came out like 99, I think, talking about water. Uh, he was like, uh, it's the new world water. Talking about how he said they, um, he said they will, the poison, uh, the poison, the, uh, um, whole shoreline because they're mining they're mining in africa poison the whole shoreline then purify it bottle it and sell it back to you for a dollar 25 so it's dollar 99 like come on yeah yeah come yeah, on, yeah. Bro. you know what i'm saying yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 she walk away smiling singing gregory Isaacs, like yeah your man is nice if i don't if i don't have you most deaf bro yo then he yep. had like um then he had like um blue what, what was his name um Damn, come on. Oh, um, yeah, like the magic, magic, the magic, yeah, the magic joint. Um, <laughs> where he had, he had rock and roll on some of his later albums. Oh, wait, that was oh. the ecstatic. That was ecstatic. They, yeah, the yeah. ecstatic, right? Then he, yeah. oh, come yeah. on, Umi said, My Umi yeah. said, Tell you love, It's the, like I yeah. said, it's the, it's the bass, it's the live guitar, it's the upright bass, it's the trumpet, you know, it's the whole vibe with most death. And then he's yeah. gonna put in some fucking lyrics that make you change your mind about things or make you say, hey, maybe I should write a little differently or maybe maybe I should treat women differently or maybe I should think about how I'm raising my kids or maybe I should think I about that. my leadership, you know what I mean? He's gonna change your I mind on things. I like music like that. That's my number two. I respect two. that, I respect that. Um. And you know what? I'm a most deaf fan, but we talk a top five. I'm a very, I'm a big most deaf fan, especially being from Brooklyn, right? Um, definitely yeah. top ten for me. Um, but so we, we, you know, we're gonna go on to number four, and yeah. it's gonna be the 18th letter, man. It's gonna be Rock Him Alive. Ah, okay, all right. So, all right. so, uh, and he should be higher, right? But it's just, you know, uh, the reason why I can't give uh, put Rock Him higher is because I didn't, I didn't get on the Rock Him until paid in full. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not paid in full. Uh, sorry, because paid in full was the first. Yeah. But follow the leader with microphone yeah. fiend. You know what I mean? Like so. So so that's when I first got put on the Rakim, and I was just like, yo, when you listen to Rakim, like he basically pioneered a flow, bro. Like he basically right. started that multisyllabic type rhyming. You know, where you have two words rhyme at the very end of the of the uh, at, at the end of the bar, and also having uh -huh. words uh, within like internal rhyming. To have words that rhyme within no, within the within. sentence, yeah, yeah, right. So, uh -huh. so I mean, and and no one was doing that. And Rakim, quiet as kept, never, uh, at least in his early on, didn't have to curse to get his point across. And right. people don't, you know, you go back and listen, you're like, yo, he really didn't. Um, Rakim is nice, like nice. He was way uh, way before his time, and he doesn't get. I don't think he gets the. Well, I think he does get the credit he deserves. Honestly, like people see that, but I don't think like financially. You know what I'm saying? He's, you know what I'm saying? Because like, you know, Drake is probably the, the most, the most popular rapper of all time at this point. He's like, you know, the, he's like a one man beat, right? You yeah. Drake? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, monetarily, he's doing very well. And I think Rakim deserves that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Financially. Right, absolutely. Um, because he, was, he started it all for me. Um, Rakim was an amazing talent. Um, again, a great storyteller himself. Um, and then conscious, you know what I'm saying? Conscious. Oh yeah, you know. So so yeah, man. Just I can't say enough about Rakim, man. And, 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 and I remember going to your house, and Trevor used to play that "Follow the Leader" uh, yeah. record all the time, man. And and like um, I said, I juice. fell in love from that point. He was on the juice. Yeah, soundtrack. no, no, the yeah. ledge, no, the ledge. Yeah. You know, it's I funny, man. Listen to that. Ledge. Going back to it, like right? And then and you had to break that. Yeah, you had to break that down, right? No, yep. the ledge, right? No, the, the ledge. ledge. That's deep, knowledge, bro. right? Right. So, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, like, again, like, Rakim is a deep brother. Rakim, Rakim fans, how old were y'all when you realized that he was saying knowledge instead of <laughs> know the like he combined both right. the meanings? Because at the end of the exactly. at the end of the movie, at the end of Juice. Oh, this shout out to Juice. This is our second reference to Juice in this in this podcast. Well, yeah, um, yeah, he fell off at, uh, he pushed he fell off at the end, right? But know the legs, bro. So my number yep. four, man. My number four. <laughs> Um, my number four is going to be uh, 
<laughs> my number four is Biggie. Biggie's Ooh. my number four. Yeah. So okay. kind of cliche. But my number four is gonna be Biggie. And um it's a lot of reasons, man. There's a lot of reasons why I could say Biggie's my number four. Where you go, man? You disappeared on me. No, oh, I was just yeah. re racking sir. re racking yes. Um, and practicing proper hygiene. Mm-hmm. Proper hygiene, yeah, there you go. So my number four right. is, is Biggie. Um, Biggie was very strong, very popular when I was in For uh, obvious school, reasons, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I was, you know, Biggie just dominated everything. Biggie taught me a lot about hip hop. Um, taught, you, know, you know, I was an MC. Um, and I just remember, I remember being able to command a crowd. I distinctly remember the one, the one incident there was one incident and um, I was like my senior year and we went to a very small school and we got invited to a, a party with other schools. And it was like the biggest party we had ever been to. It was like 500 students in this one party. And we, as soon as we get there, you know, we're feeling intimidated and insecure. And it's just this burger ass rapper that's up on the stage and he's rapping, you know, you know, fumbling over words. And he's like, and the, the crowd is booing him. Try to bore them, and my boys, you know, the dude is like, "You don't think y'all could do better? Who think they could do better?" And my boys are like, "As soon as we walk in, I don't even know what's really going on." They're like, "We got somebody for you," you know, and they, mm. you know, so I threw my hands up like, "What?" Because it was a challenge, and so I went up on stage, and I just in, in true Brooklyn Biggie. fashion, yeah, in Brooklyn you know? fashion, and at that point yeah. in my life, I was listening to really nothing but Biggie, and I was just trying to be kind of player with it, and you know, my lyrics at that point weren't, weren't conscious. You know, I was only a senior in high school, but what I was doing was talking about how lyrically better I was and how I could take dudes, girls. And that's kind of what I got from Biggie, uh, you know, like how smooth I was on the mic. My, it, for me, it was all about flow. Before I had content, it was about flow and pattern. And I got on stage and ate this dude alive, like in two bars. You know, Biggie taught uh, me a lot I was about there. Yeah, 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 they still talk about that, right? But um, my boys still talk about that. But to this day, Biggie, you know, I could, I could recite probably like probably like eight Biggie songs from, from front to back, you know, um, wasn't necessarily a, you know, I wouldn't say wasn't the best, the best lyricist, but he definitely could compose a song. And I appreciate yes. the, the rags to riches story and the struggle, you know, and I think Biggie would have been, if he was still alive, I think he would have been more of a positive influence on rap, believe it or not, because I think Biggie was trying to move to something. He, he, he wasn't necessarily somebody who was proud that he sold crack and rob people. You know, you could hear the progression in his work where it goes from ready to die, um, you know, to um, life after death. You could hear the progression and how he's moving forward, how he's like tr- really trying to squash beef. You know, how he's really huh. trying to, you know, he's trying to get away from what he used to be and be somebody that his mom could be proud of and he's going to be proud of. And I respect that shit. I respect that. Well, he's my number four. I, I, I don't know do if I set. could agree. Got you. I don't know if I could agree with the, if he was going in a positive direction. Because, I, you know, like I said, I understand that, you know, what you're saying. He, he basically went from one album to the next. And we don't even, you know, the catalog isn't long enough to really reflect that, mm-hmm. you know, because he did make a song called The Crack Commandments, right? But anyway, on, but, but... Wasn't that on, yeah, on the first album? That was Ready to Die. That was on Ready to Die. Ready that's to what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't think he had... A, you're right. I don't think he had enough time. And, and so this... Yeah. But I know what he did do is he brought New York back from obscurity, right? So um, awesome. No kidding. Uh, in the time when the West Coast had it. And, you know, we still had Nas doing it, but Nas wasn't like... Nas, as a soloist, he was just doing him, right? He wasn't doing it for New York. You know what I'm saying? To say the least. I mean, he had New York State of Mind. He had records like that and, you know, what love. But, like, it still wasn't, right. like, it still wasn't hard-hitting, like, right. club yeah, bangers. Like, no you anthem. know what I mean? It wasn't no anthem, yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. So so the thing is, uh, you know, Biggie definitely did that for us. Um, and, 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 and you know, he definitely brought, he put New York back on the map when we were losing grip. So I could respect that. I could respect that. So my number five. And this is way out there, okay? All you know, a lot of right. people would think that it would be somebody like, you know, Jay, KRS-One, something like that. But, man, my number five is Big Daddy Kane, all right? Okay. Big Daddy Kane is, like, I, I think when I started really uh, getting into hip-hop, like, he was my one of my first influences, you know, just like you said, like, with Biggie. Biggie, like, to me, Big Daddy Kane was the first Biggie. When you talk about stealing your girl and having flow and being a lyricist, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and being a player. battle rhymer, being a battle yep. rhymer, like Kane had flow, son. Kane was nice. Kane, undoubtedly, Kane was nice, and he's still nice. I don't know. I don't know if you peep the. Uh, looks like I got a little battery, huh? Anyway, 
Anyway, I don't know if you really keep the uh, the new verses with KRS One and Big Daddy Kane, but Big nah. Daddy Kane, Big Daddy Kane, still adversarial, bro. Like Big Daddy Kane, come, you know, goes at your throat, and he's still nice with the, you know, what I'm saying the metaphors, man. He's dope. So Big Daddy Kane was my real, uh, my first introduction to like, you know, smooth, like real smooth lyrics, like like laid back, like a laid back flow. Um, and I remember uh, Smooth Operator. You remember how when you when you we used to wait for the bus out by the, the motel, every car that passed by in 89 or 90 was just playing Smooth Operator. No, because I'm so smooth, right? Like, yo, bro, like, yeah. the impact, the impact that uh, Big Daddy Kane had on the streets, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves, man. And Big I guess Daddy I'm paying him by putting him in he my top dope. five, man. He, he was, was just, he was amazing. Favorite. When I was a yeah. kid, Big Daddy Kane was definitely one of my favorite rappers when I was a kid. I definitely remember that. Um, yeah. Big Daddy Kane used to remind me of like, I uh, shouldn't say people's names, but he reminded me of uh, some of the uh, the dope boys um, that we grew ah. up watching too. You know? ah. All right, my number, my number five. You're gonna, you're gonna hate this one. I'm gonna hate, gonna hate it. this one. Yeah, you're gonna hate it. And I really wasn't gonna put him in my top five until, I'll be honest with you, I was gonna put some uh, uh, an obscure artist, somebody that nobody would know about. Well, people would know about him, but um, somebody that he's not really mega famous. But I would be remiss if I didn't put Kanye in my in my top five because I'm, I'm, I'm a super Kanye fan. I am definitely Whoa. a Kanye fan. I know, Whoa. I know. I'm definitely a Kanye yeah. fan. And that, there's a lot uh, of there's a lot of five, a lot of people five five yeah. and like you're a hip hopologist. You know what I mean? Like yeah, five, I fuck with Kanye. Like, wow. I fuck okay. with Kanye. Fuck with Kanye. Okay. <laughs> Kanye wow. I, I fuck with Kanye. Kanye is a super creative genius, in my opinion. Yeah, he is. Um, whether he has whether he has people helping him write, I know all the arguments against him. You know, whether he's bipolar or crazy, or whether he is a Trump supporter or whatever the fuck he got going on, or all the shenanigans he does, gets into in order to stay famous. Beyond all of that, in my opinion, Kanye is the epitome of a hip hop recording artist. That's you know, like you could be a lyricist. You could be a freestyler. You could be somebody who can, you know, spit on the corner or spit on the beat. You could be somebody who can take a, you could write a verse a cappella and then flip it to any beat. That's a skill. You could be good with alliteration. You could be a poet. You could, all this different shit, right? But at the end of the day, when it comes to producing and master distributing music, it is an art form and it comes down to what you do in the booth and what you do in the studio. And Kanye, is a fucking monster. In the so, so, so you would say he's your, you know, he's he's he's, he's in your top five artists. He's my I, top you know, five, but he's a rapper, right? MC? So I would say he's definitely MC? my top like, five rapper. MC. Yeah, when we talk about, yeah, we talk. I even MC? like his. Oh, wow. Wow. I even like his okay. Verse. Okay. I even like so his yeah, I guess I guess I had it misconstrued a little bit, I, you know, because I'm going MC wise. Um, you know, I, I like him as an MC. I like him as I, I, I think he's a dope MC too. I think, okay. hey, oh, but, how but, about this, how about this, how about this, how about this? People hate me for this. I think he's a better right. MC than Jay-Z. I think he's a better MC than Jay-Z. I think just about on any song that Kanye and Jay-Z are on together, Kanye outshines Jay-Z. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disagree. Um, because when I go back and listen to, you know, their, their, their collab, right? Yeah. You, you man, you, he kind of did. He kind of like, you know, and then, you know, Jay-Z is kind of subliminal, you know what I mean? He, he, he yeah. throws a little jab, he's very cerebral, right? But Kanye right. is in your face. Kanye is yeah, in man. your face, right? You gonna know what he's talking about? Like you gonna understand him from the jump, right? You gotta sit yeah. back and like analyze Jay. Jay's a very yeah, complex. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I see that. I see yeah. that. But you know, like I said, at face value, right? But when you start breaking down the double entendres and all that other stuff, man, that Jay Z puts yeah, out there, you're like, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. But I see, but I see what you're saying though. I definitely can under, I can understand where you're coming from when you when you say yeah, that. Man. I definitely see that. Hey man, I dope. feel good, man. I feel good. That's a dope. I feel good. Yeah, I got a little, I got a little pump, man. I think I'm a little bigger yeah, than I, I came pump. in. You know what yeah, I mean? I feel a little good. I feel good. That was a good tight conversation, little, man. The sleeve a little tight. <laughs> you know what I'm got the medium yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. man. Oh, so, so I guess we, so we we had that good conversation on friendship, man. Um, oh, friendship, friendship is definitely um good for your mental health. Don't forget that, man. So I know we always talk about no new friends, no new friends, but um, you know. Friendship is important, man. Um, older keep the friends good nourish close. them. Yeah, keep the keep good, the good ones close. And don't be afraid. Yeah, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to foster new friendships. But at the same time, you know, protect your neck, right? Yeah, you know, because you can't have just you can't, 
Yeah, and you can't just have any old new um, person come into your life. So don't don't ignore red flags, right? Um, and if you do see red flags with e any old friendships or any new friendships, man, don't be afraid to communicate the closure. All right, you're right. grown as you're grown up. You don't need to ghost a friend. You know what I mean? Or uh, someone you want to be an ex friend. You don't need to ghost them. We'll cut it. If you're gonna cut it off, just let them know you're cutting it off and why. You know what I mean? Right. Period. Right. Period. Protect right. your mental health first. All right. Oh, speaking of closure, let's get out of here, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> Good, we good, we good. We good, man. You've been in PE with Dave and Jay. Man. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing to send her.